There's a simple infunction, your images, look at this. Any accurate infunction, for a fact, it's going to cost pus points, right? So these are the pus points here. There's an image from Robbins, right? These are the pus points which you can see in any infunction. That's how it will be in any infunction, right? Any infunction microscopy, what you'll see? Undoubtedly, you'll see obviously your neutrophilic infiltrate. If you remember the root, it came via the ureter and came to my papillae, right? So what happens is the tip of the papillae is where I have the maximum damage. So microscopic finding something called the papillary tip necrosis. This is very, very important. The tip of papillary necrosis. This can also come in an MCQ. Papillary tip necrosis is also seen in diabetes mellitus. Again, more chance of infection. So the tip of the papillae undergoes death. Not just that. It can involve the entire kidney also. It can also go outside the kidney, right? Like this. I won't call this a perinephric abscess. But yes, there's a possibility it can go outside the kidney and form a pus fill collection as well, right? So, it can involve the tip of the papillae, it can involve the pelvis. Microscopy, I'm going to see simple thing. It's necrosis and full of neutrophils. It's an acute inflammatory process, that's all, right? Patient presents with fever, flank pain, and with a an history of UTI in the near past, right? With that, with that history and examination, you put an ultrasonogram probe, you can easily find them out. That's as simple as that. When you do an urine examination, if you see any question in your clinical scenario saying WBC cast, Okay, it should be WBC cast. This is important. It's not WBCs in urine because even WBC is seen in urine, it can be from urethritis, it can be from cystitis, anywhere. If it's a cast with WBC, cast is formed in the kidney, right? It's from the tubules. So when I have a cast with WBC inside the cast, which means it has come from the renal infection, that is pyelonephritis. So this word is diagnostic of pyelonephritis in your university exam, right? For acute. Acute palinophys, you can easily pick it up. It's not a rocket science for you, right? Let's go to chronic. Chronic is always a problem because you know the problem with chronic. It's TDHF. It can destroy the kidney, right? It can destroy the kidney. That's the biggest problem with chronic. Tissue destruction, healing by fibrosis. The one important thing for chronic palinophritis, it's nothing but recurrent attack of acute palinophritis. So 100%, it has to be an ascending infunction. Because recurrent attacks of sepsis, it's very, very unlikely. The patient will be popped off, right? It's very, very unlikely here, right? So here, there's an ascending infection and one of the biggest contributors, vesicourethric reflex, right? When you go to surgery, Dr. Sandeep will definitely tell you there are five grades of vesicourethric reflex and there's a way to diagnose them as well. A fourth and fifth grade, it just like that flows. So you have to do a surgical correction. Maybe first two grade, you can do a medical conservative management within prophylactic antibiotics of all that sort. But this is the most important thing, right? Because of this vesicourethric reflex, there is a recurrent attack. There is a recurrent infection or a recurrent pyelonephritis. More and more and more it hits. Obviously, what's going to happen? It will have scar formation. Which part of the kidney? All over. Predominantly in the poles of the kidney, right? Perfect. So, in the predominantly, it have scars in the poles of the kidney. Okay, I am not saying that it will not be present everywhere. Yes, it can be present everywhere. It can be present everywhere, anywhere you have a scar. But the most important thing here is, will the scar be of same size or different size and shape? Perfect. It will be different size and shape. That's very important here. Unilateral, bilateral. Most likely bilateral because VUR is a bilateral phenomenon. Very unlikely to be unilateral, right? Second, symmetric, asymmetric, asymmetric, right? It will not be symmetric. It will be an asymmetric scar. Because I cannot tell this month's pyelonephritis to have a 1 cm scar, next month also should have a 1 cm scar. Not at all. Organism, virulence factor, immunity, antibiotic therapy, lots of them make sense. So every scar you see in pyelonephritis, you will have, this is an important gross finding for you. This can come in a university exam for you for sure. When you have bilateral and asymmetric scar formation, that's a very, very classical finding for pyelonephritis right because there are something called an symmetrical contracted kidney we did read them in your uh, uh, hypertension where it's symmetrical here is asymmetrical bilateral unilateral is unlikely but i won't say it's not possible bilateral symmetric asymmetrical scar formation diagnostic and predominantly at the poles i know you know the reason why poles because of the intrarenal reflex right microscopy microscopy is also important for me it's pyelonephritis. The primary person who is getting affected here are the tubules. Tubulointestinal, right? Tubules and interstitial. So here, 
the tubules are going to be destroyed. So chronic process. So obviously, we have an amazing microscopic finding. We'll derive to that microscopic finding. So here, let's assume the proximal converted tubules are destroyed. Okay, they are destroyed for sure. So when the proximal converted tubules are destroyed, am I right in saying that the function of the proximal converted tubule also will fall? Yes, it will. What's the function? Great, it is amazing. It is reabsorption. So what happens here is the proximal converted tubule is not going to reabsorb. It's not going to reabsorb mineral. It's not going to reabsorb glucose. It's not going to reabsorb proteins. Everything stays in the lumen. Again, for a long term, I won't. I cannot see a mineral. I cannot see a sodium in microscopy. I cannot see a glucose in microscopy. But I can see a protein in microscopy. What's the color of protein? Amazing pink color, right? Because of the damaged proximal converted tubule, there is very very less reabsorption of proteins, which will happen. This reabsorption of proteins, when it's very, very less, automatically it's going to, you'll have lots and lots of protein deposit inside, right? You'll have lots of protein deposit in the tubules. This is again a long term thing, protein can get deposited, protein can become like a concretion also, right? So, what happens is you'll have a tubule here. Let's assume there's a tubule with ultimate pink color in the center because protein is completely pink in color, right? So, now this has a very classic term. I'll show you the image and I want you guys to think and tell me how it looks like, right? There's an image. Ignore this. We'll come to this very soon. Look at this. There's a kidney biopsy. The entire tubule here is bigger, dilated, filled with proteins. Does it look like a thyroid? Yes, they do, right? That's a classical function called thyroidization of tubules. It looks like a thyroid. We call it a thyroidization of tubules. And the reason also we know it's a damaged tubule, it's destroyed tubule. It's not able to reabsorb the proteins which they have to and it's getting deposited, right? Microscopy. It's an image of uh, your gross, which is there in Robin. Scar. Here a scar. I have a scar here. I have a scar here. Asymmetrical. Bilateral asymmetrical scar. Think of chronic pyelonephritis, right? So we do know about acute and chronic pyelonephritis.